Okay, so welcome back to the periodic table, and we're going to continue drawing Bohr-Rutherford diagrams today. We're going to draw Bohr-Rutherford diagrams for the first 20 elements, and uh, there's Falero. He's an adopted chimp from the Jane Goodall Foundation. He's going to just keep an eye on all of this. Now, what I'm really interested in trying to get the point across to you is we're just doing the first 20 elements. So if you look up here, there's the atomic number. That's the first element, hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton. If we go over here, there's helium, the second element on the periodic table. It has two protons. And then all of these numbers just keep going across the periodic table. Three, four, five, six, seven, all the way across like that. We're really interested in these first eight columns, these first eight families. So we're going to say that this is family one, column one. This is family two. And we're going to cheat and we're going to jump all the way across the periodic table. And we're going to land here where it says 13. This would be like family 13, but we're going to just call it family three. So we've gone from family one, family two. Now this is family three family four, family five, family six, family seven, and family eight. Okay, so I have drawn a shrunken version that shows those eight families. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're going to fit the first 20 elements into this chart. So here we are in family one. And I've already started to draw hydrogen. I went to the periodic table. I did my standard atomic notation here for hydrogen. And then I began to draw hydrogen here. So hydrogen has one proton, zero neutrons. There's the nucleus. I need to find a home for one electron. So I had to draw an outer energy level and put one electron in it. I'm done. That's it. Hydrogen's completed. I went down the list. Underneath hydrogen is lithium in family one. So there's the standard atomic notation for lithium. This tells me that lithium has three protons and four neutrons. I placed those in the nucleus. I need to find a home for the three electrons. I drew my first energy level and I put two electrons in there. It's full. Now I can go ahead and draw another energy level, which I need to do in this case, so there it is, and I placed the last, the third electron there. You can see a pattern starting to develop. We're in family one. Look, hydrogen has one valence electron. Lithium also has one valence electron, one outer electron. Okay, so underneath lithium we have sodium, and I'll write my information here for sodium. That tells me everything I need to know to draw a Bohr-Rutherford diagram of sodium. There's my nucleus. Sodium has 11 protons and 12 neutrons. I need to find a home for the 11 electrons. Remember, if there's 11 positive protons, there must be 11 negative electrons. I'll draw my first energy level. It will hold a maximum of two electrons. Now it's full, I can draw the next energy level. It will hold a maximum of eight electrons. I, I will also need to fill it up. Now I have a total of 10 electrons. I need home for one more. And there's sodium. Last but not least, under sodium we have potassium. Forty and where are we here? 19. Draw my nucleus. I have 19 protons. 40 take away 19, that gives me 21 neutrons. So now I can start to draw the electrons. I need to draw a total of 19 electrons.
Okay, so now I'm up to 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Voila, the last energy level. And there's a trend for family one. They all have one outer electron. And you'll also notice that the period matches the number of energy levels. This is period one, one energy level. Period two has two energy levels. Look at this, period three, three energy levels. One, two, three, period four, four energy levels. One, two, three, four. Continue to do that for the other elements that remain.